These animations were built from single still images, no plugins, just Photoshop feeding After Effects. So every shot you're seeing started flat, either as a photo or an AI generation. So if you don't have a photo to start with, don't worry, there are tons of ways to generate your base image online. Just use whatever fits your workflow. Now, personally, I use Adobe Fireflies generation models as I'm a big fan of anything within the Creative Cloud. I also think we've got a discount link in the description if you wanna try it as well, but the best tool is the one that gets you creating, as corny as that sounds. Now, today I'm showing you exactly how to take one still image like this and move a virtual 3D camera through it with this animation style look. You don't need plugins, you don't need a 3D engine, you just need native tools and a workflow that ties Photoshop and After Effects together. So let's get started in Photoshop. Grab your base image and import it into your project. Now, using one of the selection tools in Photoshop, like Object Selection, Lasso, or the Select Subject feature, start isolating each major element onto its own layer. I usually try and separate them into either foreground, midground, background, or sky. And it really helps to have an image that has clear distinction between planes, like a clear foreground, midground, and background within the image. Really just make sure every piece that lives on a different depth plane goes on its own layer. Now, if you cut something out and leave a hole behind it, just make sure to fill that in or else we'll run into issues later. Photoshop makes this part very simple. Hit select subject, press Command J to lift the subject onto its own layer, then go back to the original layer, run select subject again, and choose remove this time. Photoshop fills in the background automatically. Now you've got a clean two layer setup, the isolated subject on top, and a generative filled background underneath. Just make sure to merge the right layers together when separating elements to keep things organized and separated properly for animation. You may also need to use the lasso or selection tool during this step of the process to come in and clean up tiny details or gen fill hallucinations to keep everything polished. Now here's where I personally think things get really fun. Photoshop's new generative fill partner models. You can add in props, lighting, whatever fits your scene by selecting an area and just typing what you want. Maybe add a UFO in the sky here to change the overall vibe of the image, or maybe a stuffed dinosaur if you want. I don't know, I'm not your mom. But what I'm saying is that's the power of these models, total creative freedom. So once your layers are organized onto individual layers, save your PSD file with maximized compatibility turned on. Now we can jump into After Effects. To get started, import your PSD file as a composition with retain layer sizes checked. That keeps everything perfectly aligned within the comp, just how you had it set up in Photoshop. Then enable 3D on all of your layers. Right click to add a 3D camera. I typically choose 50 or 85 millimeter and a low f-stop here, but play around with the options so you can start to see how different focal lengths affect your footage and camera movement. Now the low f-stop gives you more visible depth of field, but honestly, we'll probably fake it later with a camera lens blur, so don't worry too much about that right now. Once you're happy, just hit okay. Next, you need to start offsetting your layers in Z space by bringing up their position properties and adjusting the Z space position here. Bring the foreground layers closer to the camera and backgrounds farther back away from the camera. Something that really helps here is enabling two camera views. Keep your main subject on one side and set the other to custom view, which should give you a sort of 45 degree top-down angle. This just makes placing your layers in 3D space way easier. So once the subject is placed up front and the background is pushed back, open the scale property on each layer that you've moved. Shifting layers along the Z axis changes their perceived size, so you'll need to adjust the scale to bring them back to the proportions they had before. This keeps the scene looking correct while still giving you real depth. So quick tip here, if your background has elements like cloud or water in it, export it and run it through your favorite image to video tool, then swap the still version with the video version in After Effects, and now you've got an even more animated background with almost no extra work. You know that pain of scrubbing through hours of footage just to find one good clip? Yeah, stop doing that. Brevity's AutoCut literally scans your whole project, finds the viral ready moments, trims out the silences, and even gives you captions that pop. It's like having an assistant editor living inside Premiere Pro with you. Try it free today. Now, if you're newer to After Effects, this next step isn't essential, but it definitely makes things a bit easier in the long run. You can parent your camera to a null object for smoother control like this, and then make your camera adjustments on the null layer for easier control, or you can just animate it directly on the camera layer itself for now. Both will work fine. Either way, keyframe a simple move, a slow drift, a push, or a parallax pan through your scattered image layers in 3D space. You'll likely have to play around and refine your camera moves here as the camera can be a bit counterintuitive sometimes, especially if you're new to these type of 3D workflows. 
Regardless, spend some time adjusting different camera parameters like position, point of interest, orientation, or whatever, and using keyframes to move from angle to angle. Now, to get that snappy camera motion, you need to speed ramp your keyframes. To do that, select all of your keyframes, hit F9 for easy ease, and shape your speed graph as needed. Again, play around here to customize your ramp looks. That's where you get that snappy motion, smooth, but with energy. Now let's give the subject a little life. Select your main character layer, the person, creature, whatever it is in focus, and then grab the puppet pin tool. Drop one pin at the bottom of the neck and another at the center of the head and a few more around the shoulders. That's your ring. Then scrub to the end of your camera move and gently tilt the head forward or sideways. That tiny motion paired with the camera drift makes it feel like your subject is reacting to the movement, not just stuck there like someone who swears they hate AI, but still uses select subject on every single project. Now you can ease those keyframes just like you did with your camera motion so it feels organic, like a slow natural lean or head turn. The goal isn't cartoon rig here, it's more so breathing photograph. Now, in order to get that subtle frame leg effect or choppy animation look, just create a new adjustment layer at the top of your composition and add posturized time to it and set it around eight to 12 frames per second. Next, let's add some handheld movement. Create a new adjustment layer, name it camera shake and apply the transform effect. Set the shutter angle to 180, which gives you proper motion blur. Then alt click the stopwatch under position for transform and type this, wiggle bracket three comma 12 close bracket. Now you can adjust your camera shake by adjusting those two wiggle values, just enough to feel handheld without looking too chaotic. Now for that final polish. So I'll add some stock dust overlays, film grain, light leaks, lens textures, or whatever additional style elements you want to achieve the desired vibe you're going for. And here's a pro tip, layer them between your scene elements and not just on top. That adds depth and makes everything feel a little more tactile. Now, if your scene still feels flat, enable depth of field on your camera, or fake it using camera lens blur. Try this. If your camera moves from wide to close up, animate your blur from soft to sharp. It looks like you're pulling focus right into the subject. Once it feels right, render it out, then jump into Premiere Pro for some final sound design. Add a few whooshes, a low rumble, maybe some ambient tone, as that's where this effect really comes to life if you ask me. And that's pretty much the entire workflow from a still image to stylistic animation so if Netflix comes knocking for a true crime docuseries intro, now you've got a cover. So make sure to follow me for the future of video editing and the next generation of creative AI workflows. And I'll see you next time. Peace.